Mm. <laughs> How can they... <laughs> How they can face themselves every day, I truly don't know. I would look in the mirror, see detestable freeloader, and want to be dead. Okay, Deborah, calm down. Uh, Blogosphere's voted Influencer of the Year 2018. Speaking and... I really quite like being alive. So, my internet family. On the 29th of November, Deborah Ross of the Times released this article. Speaking about a small minority of influencers as though they're the norm and demonstrating her ignorance surrounding what we actually do for a living. Her article had sponsored posts down the bottom without the support of which I doubt work like hers would put bread on the table or reach anyone at all. But anyway, just pop that in your pocket for later. So I'm a writer. I like words. So let's break this down. Detestable is defined as deserving intense dislike. Freeloader is defined as a person who takes advantage of others' generosity without giving anything in return. So my first question upon reading this article was, who are these arseholes who deserve our loathing? My lovely auntie loves to recommend supplements on her Facebook page. Is she an influencer? Is this cafe an influencer? What about the delightful Holly Willoughby who has brand deals coming out of her arse, you know, M&S and all that? Is she talking about people like George Clooney who promotes Nespresso for money. Maybe Taylor Swift who promotes Diet Coke or David Beckham who promotes Adidas or Beyonce who promotes Pepsi. Justin Timberlake who promotes McDonald's. Jessica Simpson and that Weight Watchers deal. I would get results but they weren't lasting results and I had heard so many great things about Weight Watchers. We've got Brad Pitt for Chanel number no. 5. We've got Julia Roberts for Lancome. Charlie Theron and Natalie Portman for Dior. Or is she talking about people like Hannah Witten? who recently was paid to promote PlayStation, which is a bit of harmless fun, but she also spreads a ton of awareness on illness and body confidence and sex. Or is she talking about people like Brian of Real Engineering, who is paid by Skillshare to promote online classes. He educates the masses on his social media. Maybe she's talking about Anna Sicone, who works with Benefit and also shares the ups and downs of pregnancy and parenthood and eating disorder recovery and is responsible for my recovery from eating disorders from her sharing. That's just all off the top of my head. Like I could go on for a year. Are all of these people all take, take, take? Do they give nothing in return? Are they talentless? We need to get something straight, right? Right. Behind every successful creative, be they world known or with a relatively small niche audience, is a rake of brands and freebies. That's the way the world works right now and the way it's worked for years. The securement of sponsorship or like freebies from PR companies says nothing about how hard a person works, how grateful a person is. Like yeah, you can be sure that there are some celebrities out there who will take all of the voiceover work for all of the advertisements and will promote the shit out of any teeth whitening product that offers them enough money. Just as there are some self-made internet entertainers who will do the same thing. Each to their own like, but I think it's insane that anyone with more than one brain cell would lump everyone, every individual and every company that collaborates with brands under the same umbrella. Like some influencers rarely if ever work with brands, Sometimes they just can't get deals because of the type of content they make. Sometimes they just don't want to work with brands and they instead rely on crowdfunding. So they're still kind of expecting their audience to just give them money. It boils down to trust and choosing who you want to support and who you follow. But it's so important to acknowledge that media wouldn't exist as it does without brands, without advertisements. Everyone knows this. Ads literally make the media world go round. From magazines that have entire pages of pretty ads to TV, which breaks up your viewing of programs and movies to show you ads that pay them. To websites, to radio, to podcasts. You tell me about one entire branch of media that exists successfully without any kind of brand work or large scale payments. And I'll tell you that you're a liar. So Deborah here states that people who recommend things on social media do not pay for whatever it is they're recommending. This is utter bollocks. Excuse the language. Now, I'm no blogger. I don't have a blog where I review things, but 95% of what I show, what I wear, etc., I pay for myself. Yes, I receive free stuff. I often show that to you guys. I give most of it away. Sometimes a company will send me something, like I got a really cool phone recently that had an amazing camera on it and shared that with you guys. The main way I find out that things exist that I might want to incorporate into my life is through advertising. 
advertising is through word of mouth and companies have realized that they can reach the right people by working with influencers. Another example is I pay for my own hotels unless I'm being sent somewhere on a job and, and media and stuff, this this is not the only industry where people will have hotel rooms paid for them. My dad even gets sent away on work trips, do you know what I mean? And he's like a manager in a factory that coats hospital tools. I beg you guys to remind yourselves that negativity always screams louder. So if you see the odd post about some Instagrammer who has emailed a hotel being like, let me stay there for free, um, that's not representative of everyone in this industry. However, I can confirm that many of us do receive free stays in hotels when we are sent somewhere to provide our time and our skills. Our skills may be public speaking or presenting or vlogging or whatever it is. And I'm never under obligation to talk about or promote or share any anything that's provided for free. There's never, ever, ever, ever an obligation for a YouTuber, a vlogger, an Instagrammer, any social media person, any celebrity nowadays, because they're all on social media, for anyone to share that. We do that by choice and the onus is on you as a consumer of media to choose who you trust and who you want to follow. My old pal Deb says that if people are doing a brand deal, they won't comment that, for example, the country they've been sent to for free is a shit holiday destination. Um, what I'd say to anyone doing stuff like that is just don't lie. It's that simple. Like I'm never going to sign a deal, a brand deal, unless I know exactly what I'm getting myself into. Recently, and I'm just looking down at my notes here, I've done jobs with Skillshare, which I found very helpful. I did a job with Ann Summers, where I've shopped since I was a teen. Did a job with a bisexuality dating show, because I think it's a very positive step in the direction of visibility and inclusivity. I worked with Always Pads, because I'm trying to smash taboos on talking openly about periods and whatnot. I also use Always Pads. Did a job with Barclays, who are a sponsor of Pride, and they sent me there to document the glory of it. I worked with PicMonkey, which I use for my YouTube thumbnails and Instagram pictures. I've had an ongoing partnership with Wella, who recently designed a hair dye that decreases the risk of developing a new allergy to hair dye. See, look at me learning off all my, my brand facts. I worked with Holland and Barrett, who sell fantastic supplements and whole foods and skincare that's cruelty free. Like my management and I are extremely picky about any collaborations that we do. They need to make sense for my content and when I'm described as an influencer, I don't like to just think of it as my influence when it comes to the companies that I work with, but I do think I do a great job of that. And this woman, like the stuff she's saying, like everyone in marketing then, according to her, in the world is just shit on her shoe, do you know what I mean? But um, I like to think of my influence as being more in terms of self-care and health and self-improvement and living a happy life and chasing your dreams and doing your hobbies. Like that's that's what I feel I won an award for influencer of the year for. I'm always so bloody proud of my paid for content, always. And the money these brands pay me enables me to write a novel and work on more artsy things like short films, which I have to invest quite a lot of money in myself and I don't really make out and back from. Mainly it enables me to continue to make free content on YouTube. And yes, it, I'm just sitting at home right now, but it takes the guts of a day or two usually to get a video from concept to being uploaded. And then there's a lot of time then it comes into reading and responding to comments and posting it around and getting it out there, you know. Deborah calls followers morons. Casual bit of uh, mainstream media jealousy there. Uh, I'm not going to stoop to her level and call readers of her articles morons for blindly nodding along to under-researched drivel such as this, which contributes to the negative rhetoric. Rhetoric? Rhetoric? Me and my dad say that word differently. <laughs> but um, yeah, that surrounds bloggers and, and influencers. Thousands of hardworking people, some of whom juggle their side hustle with, you know, raising a family or their main full-time job. What I will say, Deborah, is I feel like you just need to open your eyes to the many incredible people on the internet who are sharing positive messages or really helping their viewers through comedy or advice or tips or simply by just being there. Because, you know, a lot of people nowadays are very lonely and lost and it's a beautiful thing to be able to connect with people through words, through a lens. Families are smaller, the church has collapsed, community has gone to shit and I genuinely feel like through, for example, my monthly vlogs, I really, really encourage people to just connect with their 
real life friends and family and partners um mm. my life has been so enriched by influencers as you like to call them and um i just think it's really reductive uh, what you said she also makes the assumption that online advertising doesn't work i don't really know what part of her arse she pulled this from but if you would like to have a look at the reports that i get from brands on like the traffic that is sent to them when i promote something even though my consistency in views hasn't like gone way 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 up over the years I've been getting more money as the time has gone on because I can demonstrate a really great engagement like and I know that's purely because of how I choose brands to work with and how I go about the campaigns I'm always very honest about it I never try and sneak it in or be shady about it like I'll always be like this is sponsored by this and this is why and this is what I'm using that money toward do you know what I mean like people who follow me just kind of like root for that and and I am lucky and I'm very grateful I don't just kind of swan around using people or you you know <laughs> she says influencers haven't done a single thing to merit a lifestyle where they receive freebies uh well love I'll just tell you building a following of half a million or a million or 10 million or even 10,000 that doesn't happen for no reason it just doesn't like who are these morons just following people for no no reason at all i get that some people buy followers but there's now tools there that kind of have more there's more transparency it's very easy to spot fake followings and um, th so that is a minority that she's talking about here and these people she's talking about who literally exist just to sell things like they just want to be famous and just want to sell fucking skinny tea that is not what this community is about. It just isn't. I could sit here and say that journalism is dead and journalism is just all fake news and shit and terrible and... Ugh, but it's not. There's some amazing journalism out there, just as there's some pathetic journalism. People who are flown around the world for free, who receive a lot of free stuff, you know, they're doing something to merit these things. Everyone I follow anyway. They're entertainers, actors, singers, writers, directors, comedians, models, personalities, reviewers. And yeah, they're also marketers, but they're also editors, lighting experts, agents, and so much more. And I genuinely think you're just intimidated by that. So you're using your power, your massive power to mislead people about this industry. You sit and write and you get paid to do that. Like, there was a time where people would, would scoff at your job and say that that's not a real job. What I really love about internet entertainers and like YouTubers and all that kind of thing is we actually support each other. You're not gonna see the Times recommending an article from, I'm popular, from a similar publication, do you know what I mean? You don't see BBC with advertisements for people to go and watch something on RTE. Like that doesn't really happen. Whereas YouTubers collaborate and we shout each other out and we raise each other up for the cool projects that we're doing. I have to be honest, the rest of her article is just boring. I couldn't concentrate. She starts going on about dogs or something. But I, I just want to finish by asking you to share this video. Uh, if you want to set the record straight, if you want to clear the air for maybe family and friends who don't get why you follow people online, if you want to counteract the impact that our articles like this have. Uh, yeah, share this video, comment, like it. The thumbs ups and shares and all that kind of thing are why I continue to be doing this as a full-time job five years later. And it, my company is thriving. I adore what I do. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching this video. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again in like a couple of days or a week or uh, yeah, soon. Bye.